Hey, my name is Eric, and in this video, I'm talking about a review of FreshBooks in 2020. <laughs> Not the best year so far, but you've decided that either you want to start a business or you want to get more organized with your business and you know you want to be able to streamline things a service like freshbooks certainly can do that for you uh, one of the things though that i'll be talking about in this video that i do think where freshbooks falls short a little bit is what you're looking at right here so this is a payroll matrix and you're probably wondering like oh i'm self-employed i'm not worried about payroll well, you should be if you ever plan on making more than $50,000 in your business. And then I'll explain why I ended up not using FreshBooks for what I'm doing in my business because of that. But before we get to that, I just wanted to kind of run you through as far as setup, what it looks like in the dashboard, be able to move through things on FreshBooks. Uh, really quickly, you can see me signing up on the screen right here. Really simple uh, sign up process. Uh, one of the nice things too, didn't even ask me for a credit card. It's more of a 30 day free trial. You can kind of get into it, see if it works for you and then decide if it's something that you want to continue with. Uh, one of the other nice things is pricing for FreshBooks. Um, if you have a very small business and you're not invoicing a lot of clients, uh, you can start out very uh, inexpensively on FreshBooks. And then once you get in, what you're going to do is you're going to set up your dashboard uh, and you can get your total profit, revenue streams, spending and all that. But really everything starts up here. So you'd add your clients, um, your retainers, invoices, or other incomes. Once you add the client, that's kind of like the, um, the, the foundation of everything. That's where everything's going to be working out of. And what I mean by that is like, let's say you're somebody who tracks your time hourly, like a graphic designer would. Uh, once you have the client in there, uh, what you do is you would pull up that client. Uh, you can put them in there. You can add the service you're doing for them and actually start the time tracker, which I think is pretty slick that they have this built into the service. Because if you're somebody who's already using a separate time tracker, a lot of times it's hard to make that integrate with however you're doing invoicing. And to be able to use the time tracker and then immediately be able to fire off an invoice or at least, you know, tally it for the week and then generate an invoice from that that you do. But uh, again, it, you know, it makes a lot of sense. You have projects that you can kind of manage. Uh, from what I've heard, I don't do a lot of project management. I hate it. I am horrible at it. Um, but I have a bunch of friends and there's so many different services out there. This is another one of them, but you have like, you know, Asana, Basecamp, Trello, um, Monday. Uh, there's so many of them. I have heard from some friends that really like Monday. Maybe you've seen a ton of ads from them. I know they do a lot of YouTube advertising. Um, but uh, it's a good service uh, with FreshBooks if you have a very simple business. Now, going back to this payroll matrix. Now, why do I have this? What is this? We're going to get into the weeds a little bit, but I think it's important for explaining why I didn't use FreshBooks because of the information on this page. All of the resources that I'm mentioning, I will have links for in the description. Not affiliated with this guy, Mark Kohler. Uh, he's actually somebody that I connected with at a former job. Really bright guy who's an accountant and attorney both things I am not. So, you know, I am taking his information and giving you his information. So the reason why you would do an S corp, all right, I've highlighted it here. And the reason for that is if you're somebody who's self-employed, it's just you, you have a DBA. Um, what's happening is, is when you were at a W2, um, there was a 15.3% self-employment tax. It was kind of split between you and the employer. So you didn't pay all 15.3% of that. I apologize. I don't know offhand. I think it's like usually like 7% maybe that you would have paid and the employer is paying the 8%. Um, but basically when you become uh, a sole proprietorship, whether or not you have an LLC, and now this is a common misconception. An LLC does not help you with taxes at all. It does nothing for taxes. It is a limited liability uh, corporation company. Again, I'm not an accountant attorney. But uh, the purpose of an LLC is to protect you, right? It protects your assets. It draws a line between your personal assets and your business assets. But if you are a, a DBA, a, a sole proprietorship, and uh, that's how you're set up as a DBA, you are gonna get killed on self-employment taxes. So uh, a cool uh, little tool over here on Inkfile, if you're not familiar with them, um, they're kind of like LegalZoom, just cheaper. Uh, they don't cost as much uh, to kind of get incorporated. They have this cool uh, tool here. So what you can do is you can say, all right, what is my uh, annual income? So uh, let's say your uh, net income you plan on being, uh, we'll go with $50,000. Now, what is the salary you would pay yourself? Well, I don't know, right? Well, that's what that uh, matrix is explaining. So to explain this a little bit better, when you set up an S Corp, it's just a different business entity from a DBA, you become an employee of the company, and then you can also take uh, draws from the business. And now the reason you would do that is again, that 15.3% tax, the self-employment tax. So over here, uh, forgive me, we talked about taking $50,000 as the net income. 
what this is showing us is you'd go at fifty thousand dollars you go up the line and he's saying that about twenty five thousand dollars is a reasonable amount to pay yourself on payroll and now what i see what i mean by reasonable amount is like you can't pay yourself like a dollar and then do everything with draws and the reason for that is um, with the draw that you would take from the business at the end of the year, what's left over for the net income, um, that is not going to be taxed as much on the self-employment tax. So at $50,000, you would give yourself a $25,000 salary. And then what you can go down is normally as a sole proprietor, you would be paying this in taxes. As an S corporation, you'd pay this. And that's what you'd save is $3,825 a year as an S corp. So sometimes people don't want to get into the messiness of setting up an S corp because it sounds confusing. And frankly, it is a little confusing. And as I was telling you, I wasn't lying. That's got KKOS lawyers, uh, one of them being Kohler, right? And this is my S corp record of books, all of this stuff. I mean, it's, I'm not gonna lie, it's a little bit of setup, but they did everything for me. Again, if you were to go up to $100,000 of income and we go over here, uh, he's saying about a $40,000 uh, salary would be appropriate. So why don't we uh, get that dialed in? You'd save $8,461 a year using an S Corp as opposed to a DBA. Now, going back to FreshBooks, uh, they do have a service for payroll. It's kind of hidden away over here. You can notice it's not even on the left-hand side. But what they do is they connect into a service called Gusto. And this is where I kind of start seeing red flags because I don't know about you, you've worked with different services and they uh, tend to uh, get a little bit Frankenstein, right? So uh, FreshBooks originally started out as an invoicing service and then they started adding different tools to it. And when you're adding, you know, the time tracker, that makes sense because it's all stuff that they own and operate. But when you start connecting to outside companies, that's where I feel like that's where you start to get glitches and issues. Um, a good tool, again, I'll link to this in the description, Trust Radius. Um, I was looking at this for their pros and cons was pretty good. And what I liked about it is uh, you could, you know, filter it down. I like looking at people who gave it like a seven to eight star rating because they're not like just like it's a 10 or they're not like this is the worst thing ever. The outliers, I never trust their opinion, <laughs> but I filtered it down and you can kind of see some quick uh, pros and cons here. Uh, one of the cons I think that I highlighted here, it'd be nice if they uh, interface with Quicken or QuickBooks. So what I ended up doing was I went with QuickBooks and there was a couple reasons. One of them is, uh, let me see if I got this pulled up here. Uh, so uh, they have a pretty reasonable uh, simple start program. Don't pay attention to this $12.50 a month pricing. It's really $25. It's $12.50 for like three months and then it goes up, right? Um, but they have payroll that you can add to it. They said it's $70. That's with um, that Simple Start program and QuickBooks plus $4 a month per employee. So for $74 a month, what I'm doing right now is I have all the accounting for my business, but I also have payroll because I'm set up as an S Corp and I'm paying myself um, through the business. And I was able to do that all through QuickBooks. But if you're anything like me, I got into QuickBooks and I'm like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> like, I am not an accountant. So what I have highlighted here is uh, you can see what I, I have right now, QuickBooks, Simple Start, and then the online payroll. Uh, and this payroll pricing, if you're curious, uh, my accountant told me, uh, she's like, you might want to check out ADP or Paychex. Um, they're kind of like the two big names in payroll. I called uh, ADP and I called Paychex. Paychex ended up giving me a quote for about $100 a month to run payroll. And for <laughs> the fact that I could get it in QuickBooks for about half that price, um, it was a lot easier for me. And one of the things I would suggest if you do go this method is I did a $50 uh, one-time uh, setup call. And this was cool because what happened is I got a phone call from a QuickBook Pro advisor. And what she was able to do was take control of my screen with my permission. And she would just be like, all right, um, I want you to click on this find out more button. And I would just see a red box go around it. And I clicked that. And she walked me through all of my chart of accounts and how I'm going to categorize my expenses. And she was just doing all this stuff for me. And it was really neat to be able to see that done. Um, on the, And it was a 45 minute call. It was worth all $50 <laughs> easily. And one of the other reasons too that I decided to go to QuickBooks over FreshBooks is familiarity with your accountant. Of course, if you give your accountant just all your information and you're exporting it, uh, they, they know how to look at that information and be able to tell you what they need to do. Um, but the thing with these services is uh, looking over here, FreshBooks, I can go to my team and you can invite and you can add your accountant so they can go in. But FreshBooks hasn't been around as long and there's a good chance your accountant is gonna be less familiar with this service than they would with QuickBooks. And to take it up to another level, um, QuickBooks offers a couple different services. 
This one is their live um, full service bookkeeping. $200 a month, a little bit outside of what I need right now. My, my business is pretty simple, but if that's an option that you'd be interested in, for 200 bucks a month, you'll have a QuickBook Pro advisor that'll actually run things for you. But what I'm actually looking at, um, let's see, I think I have it set up here, is that you can find a pro advisor. So I'm in Buffalo, New York, and you can see that I can see the review. She has 102. This is actually a person that I'm going to be um, uh, having a call with in the coming weeks. Um, and you can find somebody who not only is an accountant and can do your bookkeeping and all those things, but that is extremely well versed in the service. So if you're going back to FreshBooks, you're not going to have like all of these accountants all over the country that will be able to just kind of jump into your system and be able to run things for you. But when it comes to uh, QuickBooks, you can find a pro advisor and you can get somebody that's well reviewed and they'll be able to go in and kind of work on your books. So I know I kind of worked around this uh, in the long uh, way, but when you're looking at it, really it comes down to these two things for me is the reason I didn't go with FreshBooks is because my business has gotten to a point that I needed to set up this S Corp and again, <laughs> fun times. Um, but I'm doing that because I don't want to get killed in that self-employment tax. And again, you can just kind of play with this cool little tool here. And I have a link for Inkfile if you do need to set up. Uh, if you don't want to go through um, an attorney, you can go through a service like Inkfile and Incorporate. Uh, and uh, looking at this, if at some point your business is going to make $100,000 and you stay as a DBA as opposed to being an S Corp, that will cost you $8,461 a year for doing that. So it's really important that you uh, get set up and you think about the long term because you don't want to get into a service uh, that's going to start Frankensteining your payroll and that's going to have to talk to this service and then your accountant's not going to be familiar with it. And that's why I went with QuickBooks. Again, I try to be as transparent and honest with these reviews as possible. Uh, this is truly what I went with because I was comparing QuickBooks and FreshBooks and I decided to go with QuickBooks. I have a link for both QuickBooks and FreshBooks in the description along with all the other resources I mentioned in this video. If you do use my link, uh, I do get a commission, but that's also how I grow my business, support my family, left my full-time job. This is what I'm doing. I'm consulting and I'm also doing these YouTube videos. And I hope you got a lot of good information from this video today. And uh, if you are curious about a side-by-side -side breakdown, especially when it gets into pricing and plans, I do have this QuickBooks versus FreshBooks video on the screen that you can check out. And I plan on doing a full tutorial on QuickBooks as well. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching and I'll catch you in the next video.